Humanity's time on Earth is, unfortunately, limited. If society is to survive, it must prepare to relocate to another planet. The endeavor may appear straightforward, but considering the expanse of space and our solar system, it takes light years to travel to the nearest planets. Moving anywhere in the galaxy would require traveling at speeds close to the speed of light, which seems not possible until now, as scientists have created an incredible engine that defies all known physical laws. Does this mean that warp drive is viable? If so, what will the future of human space exploration look like if NASA will develop this technology? Don't move as we look at NASA's impossible light speed engine, breaking the laws of physics. Let's begin with an overview of the topic. Consider that Alpha Centauri, our nearest star system neighbor, is 4.370 light years away. Even if we could travel at 100 times the speed of light, we'd still have to wait 4.367 years to reach our destination. Even though rockets can transport humans into space, the main issue is the amount of fuel we would need to carry to get anywhere. One such element is the speed with which they can propel a starship. Because there are no gas stations in space at the moment, we will need a propulsion system that can provide significant thrust without forcing us to travel with an excessive amount of fuel. There is, however, an engine that is said to be capable of propelling a spacecraft without power and with no emissions. The device is ready to use when you attach it to an outlet and switch it on. It's been termed the Impossible Engine, or EM Drive, since it claims to be capable of accomplishing the unfathomable. I need to understand how this EM Drive works. The device resembles a rocket engine from the side but has no vents and creates propulsion by resonating microwaves within a confined chamber. The microwaves are supposed to generate a push by bouncing around inside the room. This is a significant advancement because momentum conservation is crucial in all type of rocketry. Next is the EM drive. When you leap, your feet push you off the ground. When you fly, the air moves you forward. When you fire a rocket, the exhaust gas pushes you and your payload forward. The EM drive, on the other hand, provides no propulsion. It's just a box with microwaves bouncing around inside that can reportedly move on its own. You can see why this gadget is dubbed the impossible engine today. The specifics of its operation are beyond the reach of our current physics knowledge. Even if everything works as designed, evaluating this device could either expose a weakness in our current understanding of physics or lead to the the discovery of fundamental new physics. The concept of an EM drive was born in 2001, and since then, investigations have claimed to have found a net force from an EM drive. However, the effect they are attempting to quantify is significant. The earthquake was so small that it hardly registered on the Richter scale. After nearly two decades, all we have is a mishmash of trials that have produced nothing noteworthy or provided a sufficient explanation for how they work. Many believe this project will always fail and that any effort will be futile. It is debatable whether whether this is possible with existing physics or new physics that has yet to be discovered. Following that, an iron drive. On the other hand, other space engines were formerly thought to be impossible but have since been realized. When the notion of an iron drive was first introduced, it was commonly assumed that it could never produce enough power to move even a small spaceship. However, the iron drive was successful and NASA awarded Aerojet Rocketdyne of California $67 million in 2016 to build and test a highly efficient solar electric propulsion system, SCP. An electric field propels the fuel and this driver is also known as a whole effect thruster. Solar energy must be transformed into electricity for the iron drive to function. The electricity generates propulsion by firing accelerated ions through a nozzle. Engineers have been working on SCP technology for almost 50 years and numerous space Spacecrafts, including NASA's Dawn probe, have iron thrusters. The probe is now orbiting a group of dwarf planets. On the other hand, the iron engine's poor momentum transfer limits its applicability for Mars missions, which will instead use the SCP drive. Iron motors are one of the most fuel-efficient kinds of starship propulsion, despite being one of the slowest. NASA is now running the Lunar Gateway with a highly effective electric propulsion system. Adding to that, the Zeus Reactor, a lunar outpost. In April 2021, NASA activated the iron thruster system, which is approximately 30% more powerful than earlier designs. However, NASA began investigating another method of rapidly transporting spacecraft to their destination, nuclear pulse propulsion. Around the same time, atomic jet engines were being developed by bombers, and there was some interest in using nuclear reactors to power spacecrafts without needing sunlight. The Zeus reactor is expected to last 10 to 12 years and might drive spacecrafts to other planets in less time. However, this propulsion method has certain flaws as well. Only highly enriched uranium can resist the extremely high temperatures of a nuclear reactor, which does not make 
make them safe to use. However, there is another setback for this propulsion system because the United States has barred the use of highly enriched uranium to drive spacecrafts into space. If another safe method was available, Russia is planning to launch a nuclear-powered spacecraft that will fly from the Moon to Venus and Jupiter. Roscosmos has stated that its space tug will launch in 2030. Zeus is the same, is the name given to the energy module that will power this spacecraft. It is a mobile nuclear power plant designed to create enough power to propel big goods into space. Next, nuclear power for spaceships. A trip to Mars and return would currently take more than three years, but NASA believes a nuclear-powered spaceship might cut that time in half. NASA's goal is to launch a nuclear-powered lunar lander equipped with a 10-kilowatt reactor by 2027. Though the United States has yet to launch a nuclear reactor into space, Russia has launched over 30 such devices into orbit and Zeus will sail between planets using a kilowatt atomic reactor. Some believe we are still far from having anything other than propellant power rockets. In contrast, others believe that technological advances, such as nuclear fusion, could change everything. While traditional rocket fuel is essential for spaceship propulsion, solar-powered alternatives are available. Although research into solar sails has been active for some time, technological advances make solar-powered spacecrafts more viable. SpaceX successfully launched the LightSail 2 in 2019 using the Falcon Heavy. The 7 million light sail 2 has a sail area of 344 square feet and is made of tear resistant mylar. The pressure caused when solar radiation strikes this substance propels the spaceship forward. So how fast can it go? If the spaceship is far from, the, from a star, there will be less light reaching the sails and the ship's forward speed will be much slower. Following warp technology. What about the possibility of building a warp drive? Even if you've heard that designing and building a viable warp drive is difficult, don't dismiss the potential that it will someday become a reality. Researchers recently suggested that real-world warp drive development is within reach, without a doubt, with all honesty. In a new study, scientists claim to have locked down the physical model of a warp drive. Many have suggested that the technology is not conceivable because it would necessitate many weird negative forces. The Star Trek franchise popularized the term warp drive. The Federation's faster-than-light warp drive generates explosive power by smashing matter and antimatter. But what would happen if warp drives existed? Miguel Alsubia, a theoretical physicist pioneer, is usually regarded as having developed our current knowledge of warp propulsion. This drive is compatible with Einstein's general theory of relativity. It enables superluminal flying by causing a local expansion of space-time behind the spaceship and a contraction of space-time in front of the spacecraft. The amount of energy required for the Alsubia drive to constrict and twist space-time in front of it and form a bubble, on the other hand, is likely to be greater than the required for the entire universe. An astronaut would not sense acceleration if they were inside the spaceship while it has enveloped in a bubble. Finally, the warp drive model. NASA has been working on a physical warp drive for the past decade, but they haven't made much progress. This brings us to a new study. Researchers from the Advanced Propulsion Laboratory in Applied Physics demonstrated the first physical warp drive model. If the current model demands negative energy or exotic matter, neither of which we are aware of and can make using our current physics knowledge. Neither of which we are aware of and can make using our current physics knowledge. Instead of free-flying ships, this new concept makes use of space-time bubbles. In reality, this new physical model requires practically none of the negative energy necessary in the previous model. It takes advantage of the concept that space-time bubbles can behave in any way they see fit, supported by Alsubia. However, this is simply a theory, and the required quantities are quite large. In any event, this exciting new concept brings the prospect of warp speed travel much closer than we previously imagined. Even if a physical drive isn't achievable today or for any other century, is the invention of a warp drive something you anticipate happening in your lifetime? Or do you think it will be centuries before we see it? Please let us know your thoughts and opinions and thank you for watching.